Earnest money, where does it go? Do you get it back? Does the seller keep it? All these answers and more up next. Hi, welcome back to the channel where we talk everything real estate and help you to make smarter real estate decisions. Today, we're talking about what happens to earnest money at closing. So let's get into this. Well, it depends on a few factors like what loan type, your down payment, and your closing costs. And if you have any seller incentives, title is gonna hold your earnest money, okay? And at closing, they're gonna apply those funds to either your closing costs or your down payment. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash up here on the screen. Here's an example, but since this is kind of long and convoluted, I've made two extremely simplified settlement statements, okay? Just to, just to try to make it easier to explain what's going on here. So on the one side, we've got, you know, just kind of your average typical loan. Let's say it's a $400,000 purchase. You put $4,000 of earnest money, which you've already done in the beginning. Your down payment in this example is gonna be 4,000 and your closing costs were 7,000. Well, that's gonna to total $21,000 that you would normally need to bring to closing. But since you've already paid that 4,000 earnest money, in this example, they're gonna apply that or credit it back to you, the buyer. So you're only gonna to need to bring an additional 17,000 at closing. Now, on the other side, I've put an example with a VA loan, okay? Because what do we know about VA loans? You don't have to have a down payment, which is fantastic. And this example has seller concessions, meaning in this case, the seller has agreed saying, hey, I, if you buy this house, I will take from my proceeds and I will pay your closing costs. So if we walk down the sheet here, you've given your 4,000 earnest money again on a $400,000 purchase and zero down payment, okay? So your closing costs are 7,000 in this example, but the seller has given you a credit of 7,000 to take care of those, totaling $11,000 in credits actually. So instead of bringing more money to the table, in this case, you're actually gonna get that $4,000 back. And so you're kind of getting in the house with essentially no money down. It's important to realize though, that there are instances where if you terminate after all your dates and deadlines, the seller can actually keep your earnest money as damages. That's why it's a good idea to have a real estate agent to represent you so they can help keep you on track know when and where and what those dates and deadlines are so you don't terminate and risk your earnest money. If you like this video, then you'll probably like the one I did on earnest money versus down payment. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you like more videos like this and you wanna see something every single Monday, go ahead and subscribe. If you know someone that's looking to buy and you think they'd benefit from them, go ahead and share with them. I bet they'll think that you're the superstar. All right, we'll see you next week.